it is the translators that actually put in the chapter divisions. So as we consider Paul's confidence in the scriptures, the Bible says he passed Amphipolis. Now when we talk about Amphipolis, it was one of the cities of Macedonia. And when we talk of Apollonia, that name was derived from a pagan deity. That those that were dwelling in Macedonia used to worship. But what is so important for us to care about is that when they left Philippi, why didn't they go to Amphipolis or Apollonia? What held them back? And so the Bible says they passed Amphipolis and they also passed Apollonia. And they came to Sethronica. Now how do we define Sethronica? It was also one of the cities of Macedonia. And it had actually a number of important things about it. It had actually three main categories of the inhabitants. The Romans, the Greeks, and also the Jews. And another thing about it, it is still in this place that a church was formed which church Paul wrote to two main episodes that is first and second Thessalonians. Those are some of the things that we can know about this particular place. That it was one of the many cities of Macedonia. And Paul comes to it straight away from Philippi. But the Bible says something about it was this. What wasn't in Philippi and what wasn't in uh, Amphipolis and Apollonia was in Sethronica. Look at the verse. What is that main thing? The Jewish synagogue. Because we all know so very much well. This was the mannerism of Paul. Always before going to the Gentiles, he always reached out to the Jews and he preached the gospel to them. As the Bible is so very clear to us, in verses 2, look at verses 2 once again. It says that Paul, as his manner was, this was his behavior. This was his style. That whenever he would find a Jewish synagogue, he could not pass it. Because the Lord had given them clear instruction that repentance and forgiveness of sins had to be first of all declared unto they that were known as Jews. We can also factor in Luke chapter 24 verses 47. But be that as it may, let us look at examples that show the manner of Paul's life. Acts chapter 13 and the verses 5. It says, when they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God where? The Bible says in the Jewish synagogue. That was the manner of Paul. In chapter 14 verses 1 this is what it adds in to say. Now at Iconium they entered together. Remember by this time we are still with Barnabas. They entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that great numbers of both Jews and Greeks believed. This was the manner of Paul's life. How about considering chapter 9? 
Earlier on when he had just gotten converted Chapter 9 verses 20 This is what it says It says Immediately He proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues What was his message in the synagogue? This is the same thing we are going to see in Thessalonica The message was he is the son of God when he proclaimed Jesus to them saying Jesus is the son of God let us also look at Acts chapter 18 verses 4 the best commentary for the Bible is the Bible the Bible does not actually support your teaching therefore you must must be reading from another thing. So 18. Uh, 4. It says. What you and he reasoned. He reasoned. In the synagogue. Every Sabbath. And tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. This is so consistent that the reasoning was to persuade these guys about who Christ was. I am telling you, people who come into uh, to faith in Christ is not a simple word has to be some sort of reasoning. The Greek has it as dialegomai. Don't name it your son. <laughs> but it simply means to persuade to dispute to have a discourse to have a teaching to find a way of convincing others in chapter 18 verses 8 Acts this is what it says and he entered the synagogue man I'm telling you the man was very consistent to reach out to they that were lost and he knew that there in the synagogues they hide and there were also some Gentiles that had become proselytes converting themselves to Judaism as Paul sought out for the Jews he also got the Greeks inside there but now what happened there in chapter uh, 198 the Bible says he entered the synagogue for three months what happened he spoke boldly we need to be bold when we are sharing the gospel of Christ this is not Muhammad Jesus is alive this is not Confucius this is not Dalai Lama this is not any other person but our Lord is alive he spoke boldly he reasoned and persuading them about the kingdom of God. And now let us go back to chapter 17. After having known the ways the manner of Paul's life the Bible says in verses uh, now uh, verses 2 once again and uh, Paul as his manner was which we have faithfully considered he went into he went into them three Sabbath when was the Sabbath happening it was always a Saturday and uh, that was actually that 
time when the Jews would assemble together. And they met together to hear the exposition of the scriptures. So after this Saturday, he waited for another Saturday. He waited for another Saturday. In another place, we have seen that he stayed there for three months persuading them but here it was three weeks and what happened in those three weeks look at that one there reason which we are calling what meaning that he was persuading disputing with them convincing them having a discourse with them but from where was he doing his persuasion you have to go to the scripture. It doesn't to say he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. That one thing that was very common with this apostle his weapon was the scriptures. He proved them from that which was written about the realities of who Jesus is. He reasoned through scriptures, not through experiences. Today, what is very common? People are fronting the experiences above that which is written. But what was true about Paul? He reasoned out of scriptures. The thing is this: if this gentleman had confidence in that which was written this speaks volumes to us that we should have confidence in that which is already written remember by this time the new testament wasn't yet written all that Paul had and the rest of the apostles was the old testament but they had confidence in it and today we have a complete canon but people are not seeing that God has invested his power in that which is written people do not know that now we have the whole board of truth that is the Old Testament and the New Testament but Paul was simply following in the same first step of his master the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember the first expositor. Considering the book of Luke chapter 24. Let us just look at verses 20, 23. Luke 24 verses 23. And when they did not find his body. They came back saying. That they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Okay, verses now 24. And some of those who are with us went out to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. My dear ones, look at this one here but him they did not see verses 25 and he said unto them who is that one saying it is Jesus he found them walking and they were narrating what they were told of them now was Jesus nice on them the moment you exercise ignorance Yet you have enough that should actually confront your ignorance. This is one thing Jesus actually showed us. He said to them, O oh foolish ones, this is our savior to those that do not care about that which was written Jesus' simplest version is what oh you foolish ones 
Every time Kar people don't play that which is already written. The Lord actually defines them as fools. Because if you cannot believe this which is written, you will not even believe something else. Bible says how slow and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. This is a first expositor. He had the confidence in that which he gave to the prophets. And it's that that he gave to the prophets that he used to call these guys foolish. And said, You are foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. They received of him and they wrote down but the Lord Jesus Christ had the confidence in that which he gave to the prophets look at that verse 26 was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things look at that and enter into his glory what should happen to us before glorification comes suffering does what so the Lord Jesus Christ actually portrayed us the order this is not our best life now right now it's not the best we are only to be very mindful about our ambassadorship work it was written of the Lord that suffering would precede his glory as actually the prophets wrote. Now, verse 17, he exposits the scripture for them. That's why we believe in the Bible exposition. Explaining verse by verse. Allowing the word of God to set the agenda. Following after God is menu. Putting the word of God in the spotlight. That as we expose it, sanctification is going on. Because it's all about us conforming to the image of Christ. Verses 27. And it was very fast. How can you teach people from Genesis to the book of Malachi very fast like that? It says, and beginning with Moses. Moses. And all the prophets. Now this is including uh, major and minor prophets. Those are all books that are heavy. Get only the book of Ezekiel, you stay there the entire day. The book of Jeremiah, Isaiah, those are all big volumes. But the Bible says, beginning with Moses, now Moses has a lot of books there, very heavy. But the Bible says, and all the prophets, he interpreted unto them. In all scriptures, the things concerning himself. What Paul was doing wasn't something new. This is one thing he had learned from his master. What we are doing today is not new. All orthodox Christians have always been actually expositing God's word. So this speaks to me and you that we should have confidence in this that is written. That if Jesus had confidence in that which was written by man as he actually inspired them to write. Therefore we should have confidence in this that we already now have. This is what John Calvin said. He said that the proof of faith must be sought at the mouth of God alone. 
And I'm reading again. Oh, I am quoting again. That the proof of faith must be sought at the mouth of God alone. Where should we seek for the truth? In the book. That's where. God's truth is made very clear. Not in visions. Not in dreams. I hear the appearance of this and that. Those all change. Calvin added in to say, if we dispute about matters which concern men, then let human reason take place. But in the doctrine the authority of God alone must reign and upon it must we depend no any other if we are reasoning amongst ourselves it's okay you use your reasons there. you speak your mind the people say I'm just speaking my mind but when a person stands behind the pulpit we don't want you speaking your mind let the scripture speak for itself. That's why the gentleman says, if we dispute about matters which concern men, then let human reasons take place. But in the doctrine, the authority of God alone must reign and upon it must we depend that's why the hymnist says your word alone is a solid ground the mighty rock on which we build in every line the truth is found in every page with glory filled another one adds on to say we will trust in God's word alone where his perfect will is known our traditions sift like sand while his truth forever stands these are all realities that there is nothing else we should depend on for doctrine other than that which is written no any person can speak for God but God that's why Paul did this he reasoned with them out of scriptures he would have dwelt on his Damascus encounter with Christ man it was very outstanding I was put down but Paul never zeroed on that. But what was very simple was to use that which was written and everyone could affirm to it. Paul could also have referred to his many visions that he saw in heaven. But he remembered he was not permitted to say anything. But he was allowed to say something of that which was written there he gave them proving to them from the scripture saying that Christ needed to suffer and afterwards he had to rise from the dead this is actually making the teaching very simple you are holding on to that that is unchanging the thing is this why did Paul reason out from the scriptures number one because the truth is objective it is not in us it is outside us it can be trusted and the truth is unbending others can bend but God's word is unbending number two the truth 
Abia of the scripture. Pagina choya. Actually, is rational. You can understand it. Because it was written to real human beings. In real languages. So people can understand it. The bloody thing. That truth is honest. What it says today is what it's going to say tomorrow. The first thing, the scripture is the final authority on every word we speak. That's why we should have confidence in it. The scripture is the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14 to 16. So every time you get into the scripture, you are reading the mind of Christ. The fifth thing, the truth that is in the scripture is incompatible with anything else. You cannot actually join it to some other things. It is intolerant to error. So Paul had confidence in it. And so he reasoned with them out of scriptures. We are not going to convince any person when we are just speaking our minds. We have to be immersed in God's word. We have to hold on to it. That's why I believe that all the apostles were holding to Sola Scriptura. A belief that scripture alone is the authority for the Christian faith. We do not have any other authority. We are all under the authority of scripture. Deuteronomy 4 2 says. Uh, we should not add on to that which is written neither should we subtract Deuteronomy 12 32 also says we shouldn't add or subtract from that which is written the book of Proverbs chapter 30 verses 5 to 6 it says none of us should reduce on his word lest he rebukes us for his word is pure what did he say, what did he say to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 4 6 he said ne- never should you ever exalt any man above that which is written and when Jude was writing I love his word. He say that I found it necessary my dear ones to write unto you of our common salvation of our common salvation that is why I added in to say that you should contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered. Now, you know that person doing this work earlier only left Philip I beaten. We are not sure whether even the wounds were healed. Because according to how he writes to them, these very guys where he was, look at uh, chapter 2 from the book of First Thessalonians. Chapter 2 verses 2. When he wrote to them years later, he reminded them this. But though we had already suffered and had been shamefully treated at Philippi. You remember? From Philippi crossing past Amphipolis crossing Apollonia then he came to Thessalonica and he says to them that much as we had left uh, 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 Philippi so very much shamefully ashamed having suffered so many things as you know <laughs> that means they knew he could not have forced them to know what happened to him. but he hasn't to say 
we had boldness in our God to declare to the gospel of God amidst too much conflict. Today you can have a simple headache and then you say, I'm not going to teach. But Paul says that amidst much conflict, we spoke to you the word of God in boldness. My dear ones, there is no excuse for what we are called to do. Let me remind you again. We were still writing to this same church. In our second Thessalonians, chapter 2, and the verse is 15. He says, So then, brothers, so then what? Brothers, he adds in to say, stand firm, my dear ones. There is a lot of new things that have been invented into the church. This narrative theology, uh, ministers being storytellers, church becoming like actually a comedy store. People are just laughing, laughing about what you don't know. Paul says, for that not to be seen in the church of Christ, the minister's hand should be in the book. The finger should point. And when he was writing to them, he said, I remind you to stand firm and hold to the teachings that you were taught by us. Listen, listen. Either by our spoken word or by our letter. There is no any way the Lord is going to speak to the church outside this which is written. That, the church of Corinth, they were actually the immediate audience of the apostles. So some of them had to speak verbally. But those that would join later after he had left actually Thessalonica, they had a letter to read. You and I belong to they that are supposed to read a letter. We have never seen any of these apostles in person. But their apostolic authority still has us. Through that which they wrote, the issue is standing firm. Look at 2 Thessalonians 3.6. He says the same thing. But here even warning. Saying, now I command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this one here. That you keep away from any brother. <laughs> There's another version. It says, any so-called brother. <laughs> Keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness. How many brothers are we supposed to walk away from idle preachers having no word? But only spewing out hot air. Idols. Not actual laborers in that which is given. And he says, not in. Accord with the teachings that you received from us. My dear ones, the issue of us having confidence in that which is written is key here. It's very important. It was on the heart of the apostle. To the Corinthians, this is what he said to them. 
Ina ngo ama ya lo gbade. First Corinthians 11. Jo kore mi a che, tu ona par che. He did not forget them because uh, they also needed to know this. We are for will come get piano mi ada no mi arbe kung ngi loke. And he says, jo watch it. In verses uh, 2. I commend you because you remember me in everything. If we are to remember any minister, we should remember them for them upholding to that which is written. Not for anything external. No. He says, Watch it. Maintain the teachings even as I delivered them unto you. Why would he say to them to maintain something that later on would change? We maintain that which is not going to be changed. As a matter of fact, he says again to the junior minister that was known as Timothy to show to us that everything is in the scriptures. 2 Timothy 3 6, uh, 14. It says, but as, but as for you, continue in what you have learned. The thing I'm saying to you, dear ones, let us continue in this. Doesn't matter what. All other things that he said, they are actually shifting sand. But it is God's word alone. That stands forever. I love these words every time I read them. That your word alone is solid ground. The mighty rock on which we build. That in every line, the truth is found. And every page, you're glory filled. Pulpits that do do not centralize on the scripture. There is not any glory that they have seen. They are living under a fog. Because their minister is under mist. If a minister does not understand what he's teaching, what happens in the audience? You cannot see the glory of the Lord revealed for us in the scriptures. That's why he says to Timothy, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed knowing from whom you, you've learned it. Look at 15. And how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings. Why should we be more acquainted with them? Answer. They are able to make us wise. We do not reason like they that have come to a place of hating God's word. We don't see things the way they see them. Because they reason based on what is around them. But God is word. Because of the, the glory in it. It enables us to see things that are actually in, in the manner that, that is in line with everything that is written. Then he added in to say to the junior minister that uh, from your childhood he has been acquainted with sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Now here we go. In verses 16 all scripture all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable. Why should we hold on to the scriptures? Scriptures number one. 
They are profitable for teaching. Everything that concerns all that demands teaching. Scripture is sufficient. Scripture is profitable for reproof. Everything that demands a reproof. What is sufficient is scripture. Third thing, scripture is profitable for correction. Everything that demands correction, scripture is sufficient for it. Fourth thing, uh, scripture is profitable in training. It is profitable for training in righteousness. Everything that demands training in righteousness, scripture is sufficient. And the moment you dilute it, the moment you don't play it, that basically means you are not going to be taught. You won't be able to be reproved. You won't have the correction. You'll be lacking in training. But one thing we love about this. This wasn't only written for Timothy. It was written for all of us as believers. To seek. To live by scriptures and proclaim scriptures. No wonder a gospel minister is told this. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 2 it says preach the word. It doesn't say tell stories. It doesn't say share your visions. It doesn't say share your experiences. Your dreams no lucky. and this or that no jammy, no jammy, it says preach the word Why be ready in season and and out of season and you know there are ministers when it comes to days like Christmas or, or New Year's Day they begin to say I think people need some sort of stories that's why the writer is actually led and guided that when he's writing to this person he says be ready because the possibility is also there of not being ready to preach it in season and out of season and in it there is reproof there is rebuking there is also encouraging people to do that which they have heard as we do it with patience and also holding on to the doctrine very important things going back to our book here that we are considering from in Acts chapter 17 I want now to zero a little bit on verses 3 and verses 4 as we bring this to a close this is what happens the Bible says that opening the people for us to follow or the road for us to follow is the road of Peter and Paul our Bible should be open they should not be closed nowadays you know what ministers do they come with a closed bible and then they stay there like this they talk to people with their bibles closed police style who do not allow him to have his, clo- his bible closed the bible says opening our bible should be opened it says here it also it also says here. It also says here. Have you seen that one? Let us also go here. There we are building. But if it is closed, how are you going to instruct? How are you going to teach? How are you going to reprove? How are you going to actually correct? How are you going to train in righteousness? It has to be opened. And the Bible says that explaining 
How do you feel when you hear these words? He was explaining. If the Bible is closed, you have nothing to explain. What I going to explain? Explaining and proving that it was necessary. It wasn't caught in something new. They that lived before him had written about it. And today we are not sharing a message that is new. The truth is not in the new books on the market. The truth is in this old book. And so the Bible adds in to say that Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead. These are cardinal issues today that are working on people's minds. That's why people say there are many religions today. But which one is true? <laughs> if you want to know the true one, come to the book. It is Christianity alone that has a resurrected Messiah. All other gods They have a name But they have nothing to prove Our Lord He actually prophesied his death He prophesied his burial he prophesied his resurrection. You cannot get it in any other book. It's this book. And so the minister that is to teach from this book should not spend the entire week harvesting rice. And then on Sunday he wants to handle the book. The book will handle him. It says, study to show yourself approved. A minister that does not need to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of God. There is time that is devoted in understanding what is given unto us here. The Bible says what these Jews needed to hear is that Christ was who he said he was. The message given to the Jews then is the same message people today that are actually so very much heart hardened about Jesus' message need to hear. He died for sinners. And when sinners hear, that's why me I don't just believe in two these things. He just died for all. He died for all. There are those who do not know. Ask that no. That he died for us. We have to ask ourselves a question. What was my condition? I am a sinner. I could not atone for my sins. But a savior came to atone for my sins. I believe he died for my sins. Therefore, I believe unto the gospel. Those that have not been confronted with this thing. To see themselves as sinners. You don't need to show them. Or to tell them. He died for you, died for you. First bring them to a place of recognizing that they are sinners. And show them what is the wages of sin. It's death. But let me tell you, the good news is this. What was awaiting you after now that you have accepted that you are a sinner? God made a way in the person of his son. Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin that you can become the righteousness of God. But you need to first show them that they are sinners, they are helpless. 
There is no moral ability in them. Yes, they might go on bragging. And say, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But good compared to who? To yourself or to God? If you're good compared to yourself, you're good. But how about the higher standard of our God? You remember that young man? The young rich ruler? When, when Jesus told him that uh, he knew the commandments. And so the Lord what he did with the young man was very simple. Jesus gave him actually a commandment that is not there. And he told him <laughs> he told him something very outstanding. Defraud not. Sell all this that you have and follow me because you are telling me you want eternal life. That is not a part of the commandment. And so since the young man had uh, actually boosted that he had kept the commandment, Jesus told him one thing you lack. Sell all this that you have and follow me because you are telling me you want it and all now that alone just proved that uh, the young rich ruler for sure he had never come to know Christ first commandment worship no other god but me the man had fronted money so because of money he was living on to follow god to go with his money and so that alone proved you cannot keep the rest of the commandments if you fall short of the first one. That's how the scripture shows. And the thing is this. What Paul did here. He didn't take these guys to something else. He showed them from the scripture. That the Lord had to suffer. And all these were already written in the books of Moses. In the prophets. In the book of Psalms. And if they were reading. They could indeed tell that Paul wasn't lying to them. And what is very amazing is that, that person that suffered and died is the one that I'm preaching to you. Is Christ. No any other. And there he labored night and day to convince these guys to come to faith. And what is very outstanding is that those that he had blessed with the true gospel in Philippi they sent him support Philippians 4.16 this is what was happening because he confronted them and he told them guys before we go to it let us first look at chapter 2 verses 9 First Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 Paul says for you remember First Thessalonians 2 9 for you remember when we were poor, brothers, Omega. how our labor and toil, we worked night and day, you, the world changed. that we might not be a burden to any of you. <laughs> While we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. Toiling night and day. But there were people that were covering for that. But Paul did not forget to appreciate them. In chapter 4 verse 16 of Philippians. He said. To the Philippians. That even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. 
Kar bi juda kar. These were devoted people that had gotten the message from Philip. Eh no ti jo ma no gi ye ma gem gi twaro kon kilo pi. And I did not know what Paul had suffered in Philip. Da gi ngi o ke chara ngo ma Paul de ni. And they knew that he was now in Thessalonica. Da gi ngi ada ne no endo ti Thessalonica. And they did all that they could to support him to do the work there. Ti go ti mu je we ngo mi ano mer gi ti we ko kon ngi ti ku. So my dear ones. Ti do mi amarwa. We should always appeal to the scriptures. Wa mi are wa ket yet wa kom gi na choa. And I'm saying it again. We should always appeal to the scriptures. Wa mi are wa gi na choa e na ko be long. Our reasonings are not going to give us any success in sharing the gospel and the preaching of the word. La lo ko pu mo mi no wa ni tu ju pel no Now what do we see the last verse here that I want us to consider? Gena don wan nero ka nyi che mi ageke ka wa ka wa kere lo pane. Is verses 4. Eh chinga ngwa. Bible says and some of them were persuaded. Ki jo mu kene twinyi gero wa me. And joined Paul and Silas. Chi go rat go na take Paul ki sira. God blessed his share. Lo ba go go me kom nya ko lo ka. As much as. Ni kere beti. These Jews were the in, in fact up to now. Kero ko bete the hardest people to reach with the gospel are the Jews. Jo ma dong ta da were yo bor ngi kwa na be to die. Because they have some knowledge of their Torah but they have they have a lot of misconceptions. Ya nge tiki nge mo e kom chek ma ke me nge cha am eto gi pe tiki nge ma be to twa. Our prayer is that the Lord meets them with people who can rightly divide the word and show them Christ. Lega wa tie ne lo ba ko ro ate ke gi ki jo ma ro mo ya to gi lo pa lo ba ma be wa go nge Christo. But hard as they were. Ya to ke ba ge te ke ne. Listen to this. We call it. That didn't hinder Paul to reach them. Eh ne po ge on Paul wa Paul po o Paul. Even people are hard we have to continue to reach them. Ke ro jo ma te o me ro o Paul ge. Because ya ne. It's God who gives the increase. Lo ba ni wa go jo me te me. Bible says and some of them were persuaded. Bible why ne jo mu ke no chungu tu ke. Persuaded who? Nga ge ba chungu tu ke. This one here. Ke da ko ile. The Bible says and great many of the devout Greeks. Bible why ne lo ro ma Paul ne da. Are you see? These we Jews were not easy. But you die in a keep your. These Gentiles got it. Lo rock good on here. And the Bible says, Bible watch it. And not a few of the leading women. They man not a common man no get to tell. Now women those days were actually in this place were also scholarly. Mon ne ka bere ni ka e no be kwa. But the scholarly ones how they were want to Christ. Eto ba go kwa na ke mai chi ko kere kon Christo. Remember the word We poi ko lo dialego mai dialego mai it was persuasion and you be lo ma no tie reasoning la lo persuading them ko no ge ta mo tie putting with them no ge la lo ko ge na when actually he he won them under that ta ka do chi ko ge ko lo ka no even the leading women ke ro mo ma no ge ti lo ta the bible says not a few of them bible why in the paper not ke ge ge That is now to indicate to us something. You don't know about what you mean. That the church of Thessalonica, ne, gang lega pa jo Thessalonica ne, was actually a church. Eh no beru jomu ye that was having so many gentiles. Ma no lu rok no ge dwong ya de da. So many of the gentiles, lu rok ma Paul, made up that church, the Greeks. No ge tie ke jomu ye a lega am. Why do we say what we say? Ping on wa loke ko ngomo ta loke. It's because of what we shall see next week. Look at that verse 5. Just to look there a little bit. Ping on wa nero ge cha bia no bia no ko wa nero che nga bi ji ko wa wa wet ki nero. Look at that verse 5. Wa nero ko che nga bi. But the Jews, er no judaya. Now even if you love them so much. Kere ne mar get da. Yeah stubborn and it go alone is to deal with that stubbornness. E di are da me lo ba yo ti ko di on. Who own the synagogues? Anga ma lo yo ala gan. He went there purposely for what? Eu tinha o coro petia lá agora. But look at the guys in verse five. Que nem com o Jumone. But the Jews. É no Judaia. Who are jealous? Que eu perdi dinheiro. We don't care about your dialego mai. Que eu par pe dialego mai nem. That was says. But we watch it. They were very jealous. Dinheiro para o quê? And you know where we came from. Dinheiro cá o aqui. Whenever they would see Greeks believing. Tá com dinheiro no Greek tica ye. They would stop the crowd. Dinheiro por tudo que tinha dar. Para secure the apostles down. Where they won no qual. They are those calibers. Ticket jo de ano. Of individuals. Para dar. That for them They don't want anything that is to do with the preaching of the gospel. If they cannot do anything to stop it, what they will do? 
They want to run very fast. You meet them and say, Why are you running? <laughs> Gospel preachers are coming. Gospel preachers are coming. Why are you running? They want to tell us the way, the way of God. My friend, don't you want the way of God? Ah, no, 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 man. <laughs> so let's just thank the Lord for today.